Yeah, so I mean, pain self-management skills are, are not a quick fix. You know, and patients are looking for quick fixes. They want medications, they want surgery. It's basically learning how to live with pain, so it has to become a habit. So the workshop that Sam and I ran, a lot of the things are repeated week to week. And part of that is developing an action plan. So they do something that's achievable and break it down into small steps. And they have to try to achieve that week to week. And the group kind of holds them accountable. And so some patients were saying that over time, they kept doing the same action plan. And it became a habit. It became a routine. And they continued to do it. Now, if we were to follow up with them years out or months out, they may have fallen back into old routines. So I think for clinicians, if they're seeing them at month intervals, six months intervals, to continue reinforcing and re reintroducing um, those topics to, to make it habitual. I think, like, I think the role of the pharmacist is very, it's not very well known all the time. I think that traditionally, and even myself going into pharmacy school, I did not know all the different avenues that you can take once you become a pharmacist. The options are truly limitless. Um, so Laura practices in more of an inpatient setting, so she's seeing patients kind of within the hospital, and currently in my position, I see patients on more of the outside of the hospital setting, so in more of a clinic setting or the outpatient pharmacy. So both, I think, offer great opportunities to work with our patients. Laura kind of gets them started, and then in the outpatient setting, I see them month after month, every three, six months, however often they need to be seen, and I'm able to kind of follow them a little bit more and take what Laura has taught them and hope that they're able to continue putting that into practice in their everyday lives.